Hey y'all, it's Amanda and this is my Texas Zone 8 garden and today we're going to be working on this middle section um, raised bed. We're going to be cleaning out a lot of weeds, overgrown flowers and planting a lot of brand new cut flower seedlings. Okay, so this raised bed is one of six raised beds that I have in the backyard that are focused on cut flowers. These raised beds are from Amazon. Um, I think they're still available. I'll put the link in my Amazon store if they are. And they've been really great. This is their third year, fourth year? fourth year, maybe fourth year um, at this point. And I'm gonna focus mainly on this one. I try to divide, when I'm doing gardening projects, I try to divide it up in smaller sections just because it makes my life so much easier. And let me walk around real quick. We are expecting a lot of storms later today, so I am really trying to get through this, get a lot of stuff done. So all of this you see right here with the white flowers on it is green dragon cress um, growing up. And I planted that a few years ago and it has seeded itself over and over and over and over again. I highly suggest not planting in green dragon cress unless you want it everywhere. So it's been a constant battle um, with it where I'm just trying to contain it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by pulling up a bunch of that. I can harvest it for cut flowers, but I've got a whole nother area as well. I don't know. Maybe I'll just go ahead and start with pulling it all up. And then from there, I might save some of it for a flower arrangement. Now it is really easy to pull up. You just really come down here to the base of it. And as long as your soil is um, soft and um, or maybe a little bit moist, it's pretty easy to pull up. So you can see like that was really easy. I got a handful, no problem. So let's go ahead and knock that out. Okay. On this back portion, I've got what's called crimson clover. And I planted it in the fall and it overwintered in the ground. And I am pulling it up now because underneath it are other plants, including some perennial scabiosa that I want to enjoy. And so basically what I'm doing, um, I think I'm gonna save, oh, let's see. And these are cool looking. I think I'll harvest some of these um, to keep and enjoy. So let me just cut all the way across the bottom of the plant. That seems to be what might work best. And then just come in here and take some pieces, strip off the leaves. I'm not real sure how they do as cut flowers. This would be my first time experimenting with them, but they sure are cool looking. All right, I need to be careful getting in here because this is where that scabiosa is. for cut flowers today. I'll go stick these in a vase. So a couple of years ago I started some uh, Fama White and Fama Blue Scabiosa from Seed. It was hard. Um, those are the perennial Scabiosa and uh, I only ended up having this one plant come to fruition which I'm still grateful for the one plant, but it was buried under all that crimson clover. All right. All right, 
I'm going to work on this side first and the first thing I'm going to do is lay down a bunch of plant tone to and instead of fertilizing each little hole where I am putting plants I'm going to go ahead and put plant tone across this whole back half portion here just because it makes it easier than going back and forth with each hole and getting some plant tone put in it and it'll just enrich all the soil so let's do that It's heavier than I thought. And we'll just go ahead and get this mixed in. Top few inches of the soil. So... We are going to start by spreading out some seed dahlias, some dahlias I started from seed. And in the past, they haven't done so well for me in these raised beds, but in the past, I've started just from tuber. These are much further along. And I started these back in January. They're looking really good. It's a couple of different varieties. The first variety is pom-pom dahlias. Um, and this one's actually getting ready to bloom. And the second variety is double extreme dahlias um, as well. Now, Typically, you would plant your dahlias and you would pinch them for more blooms. I'm not going to do that. My reasoning behind why I'm not going to do that is it gets so hot so quickly here. And my dahlias stop producing um, when it's really hot. And so I'm just going to go ahead and let them produce their first flower. And um, go from there, cut them back after that point, And then perhaps they'll give me another round of flowers come um, fall. So basically what I'm going to do is I've got six of these. And I'm just going to spread them out. Um, and then I'm going to be planting flowers around them, um, seed, uh, seedlings around them, cut flower seedlings around them. I think we're going to be doing a mix of azuratum and gomphrina around them. And I think that'll help with support for the dahlias, keeping them upright by having those additional flowers around them. Oh, you can already see the tuber growing right there. And then also if my dahlias don't work out well, then I've got still got stuff growing around them. Um, which makes me a little bit feel a little bit better like i didn't waste a bunch of my garden space for it uh, for these so it's been really fun growing these from seed i do intend on doing it again if there are any flowers that i really like i might try to save their tuber but probably not um, saving overwintering tubers inside has never really worked for me for dahlias um, so i would rather just start fresh if I can um, next year with additional seeds and you know the thing with the seeds is you never know what you're gonna get um, that's a very Forrest Gump <laughs> comment um, but yeah you don't know what you're gonna get so I, I think that's exciting and really fun so these will go ahead and get planted got six of those planted out just like that double extreme and pom-pom okay on one side, we're gonna plant Gomphrina raspberry cream, and on the other side, we're gonna plant the timeless mix of Azuratum. And I started all of these inside these seeds myself, which was great. I'm gonna need to take my gloves off to get these little seedlings out, um, which is really fun. I started these not very long ago, and they're already in wonderful shape. And we are expecting a big rainstorm to come through, so this is the best time to go ahead and plant them. So I'm gonna go ahead and start removing these and planting them they'll be really easy to pop in um, just because they're so little and i'll do a voiceover on um, all the different characteristics of this raspberry cream gomfrina okay so i purchased the raspberry cream gomfrina seeds from johnny selected seeds this is an annual flowering plant it's only hardy in zones 9 through 11 used as perennial it's approximately 24 inches tall and it blooms early summer through fall and it's easy to take care of it produces a lot of beautiful light pinkish brackets which are great for drying it definitely requires absolute full sun and i will say the more you cut on it the more it's gonna produce um, I also like I said I love to do drying with it um, hang it upside down or you can just go ahead and arrange it in a bouquet and just allow it to dry that way but it's a wonderful wonderful flower 
Okay, next I'm going to do Timeless Azuratum. Now the Azuratum does tend to uh, reseed itself and I'd actually be all right with that. I have, feel like I have a better understanding of Azuratum now. I've had it in the past and didn't love it. I think I just didn't understand how to use it in flower arrangements, but I feel better capable of being able to do that at this point. And so if it reseeds itself, I would be absolutely thrilled. And I started these not long ago um, either. There's definitely still time to start all of these seeds. You can direct sow or you can go ahead and start them from seed inside, whichever works best for you. I'm a control freak, so I start most of my seeds inside. Um, and that just works better for my needs and my brain. But if you want to direct sew, you can totally do that too. These do fine direct sewing as well. So these seeds were also purchased from Johnny's Select Seeds and they are classic filler. Um, the flowers are about one to two inch flower clusters. Um, great for texture and interesting mix and bouquets in shades of red, pink, blue, and white, which complement any color scheme. They are bloomers from early summer until frost and make, um, typically you make succession planting on these so they are not cut and come again. And these are about 24 to 30 inches tall. Um, they're also known as floss flower. Looks good. And then once I'm done planting everything, I will water all this in. Okay, let's talk about this next section. Now, there, yes, there are Christmas lights going through here. These were in here for the cold weather to help with keep things from freezing. Let me pull these real quick. Okay, so I had actually planted a bunch of straw flower in here in the fall to overwinter and it did not make it through the freeze. So you can see a lot of these dead sticks here. That was all the straw flower. It actually had grown up beautifully. It looked really, really nice. So sad that it didn't make it, but I started some more from seed, so we're good to go. Let me go around here and I'm just gonna pull out the old dead straw flower and any weeds and of course, any additional um, green dragon crests. I've got a lot of larkspur coming up over here. That's kind of like all these like frothy looking ones you're seeing, all, the, all those. Looks like I have some zinnias poking up. That's exciting. So I'm gonna start with some fertilizer in this area. I built this little thing. Of course, now I'm not gonna be able to remember the name. I built this little thing last fall and I love it. It's like a little nest. And really into it. <laughs> I had really a lot of fun. I built them based off of watching Jerry with Hopalong Hollow. Some of her stuff that she does. Hers are neater than this one. <laughs> but it was a fun experience to start. And now that it's kind of gotten older, I can continue to push it down and add more if I want. But yeah, really love it. I think it's just a neat addition to the garden. I would like to my, do more. I do need to do some trimming on my willow tree. And once I do that, I'll use the willow branches to do this again. Okay, I've got my straw flower seedlings. I started them also not very long ago. And this is the Swiss Giants mix. And I don't have to do a lot of prep because I've already put in the fertilizer, which is awesome. And then just got to pop these in super simple and easy. Now I picked these also up from Johnny Select Seeds. Um, these are about 40 inches tall, um, absolutely beautiful. They're excellent for cut flowers and excellent for dried flowers as well. Um, this particular variety blooms really, really large and that's lots of them bloom at a time. So they are cut and cut them again. So the more you cut on them, more flowers will grow. They are heat and drought tolerant, which is amazing for them. Um, we typically plant them in the spring and then harvest them summer through fall. And they are a big time pollinator attractor for bees and butter butterflies, easy to maintain and pay attention to. And they are known for being deer and rabbit resistant.
Okay, looks good. So I've got all my straw flower just kind of nestled in right there. Now over here is a whole bunch of larkspur, so I don't really want to mess with this area, but let's look in this area and see what we can add in there. Okay, so I've got some Rebecca right here that I grew from seed a few years ago, and it's taking its sweet time to come to fruition. So I've got some of that in here. And then, of course, as soon as we go over here, we've got Ageratum, and we've got Larkspur over there. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and charge the soil with some of the plant tone. And I think what I'm going to do is tuck in a few more of the seed dahlias and then backfill it with some scabiosa. Okay, so we've got another of the pom-poms. These are really dry. They need it to be watered. Don't, don't plant your plants when they're really dry like this. this. is not the way to do it. I should have watered these first. And this location of the bed, I think is good for dahlias, this bed, because it does get afternoon, some um, dappled afternoon shade from the willow tree. And I'm gonna tuck in two varieties of scabiosa. The first one is Merlot Red Scabiosa, and the second one is Beaujolais Bonnet Scabiosa. And I grew both of these from seed. Okay, Merlot Red Scabiosa, um, elegant, whimsical, cut flower, very productive plants. The blooms are about one and a half to two and a half inches wide. Dark wine colored blooms stand tall on st strong slender stems and they're about 26 to 36 inches uh, tall. They do like full sun and um, they are known as absolutely as an annual about 90 to 100 days to maturity. Their variety is Scabiosa Beaujolais Bonnets, and they are an unusual, strikingly beautiful addition to Scabiosa offerings. Mauve pink petals surround a deep burgundy center highlighted with white stamens. Excellent for cut flowers, and pollinators adore them. They are considered perennials, and they are approximately 24 inches tall, blooming late spring to midsummer, love full sun, and perennial in zone six to nine. Okay, this bed looks a lot different than when we first started. If you recall, it had a whole bunch of this when we started and some of the crimson clover. So now what we've done with the Ghana and we have a concentration of straw flower right here. This uh, Liatris was already, I'm not Liatris, Larkspur was already coming up and we even have some zinnias trying to peek out. We already had the existing Rebecca right here and we added two more dahlias to this space and then two varieties of scabiosa for cut flowers. In this section, we added six seed dahlias, um, the pom-pom variety and the double extreme. And then we tucked in additional cut flower seedlings, this timeless azuratum, all on this side. And then on the other side, we tucked in raspberry cream gomfrina throughout the space. Now this bed is on drip irrigation. It gets, this way it's east, so it gets sun all day until about two or three, and then it gets dappled shade um, in this space is west. So it gets dappled shade in the hot afternoon sun, and it does really, really well. It gets so much sun during the day, um, and then it's protected from the afternoon sun, which is fabulous. This bed is gonna be loaded with flowers. Okay, storm is definitely coming. It is humid. 
Okay, this feels good. I'm gonna be going bed by bed. I'm just working on one bed at a time instead of trying to do all of them at the same time. It works better for my brain to break it up that way and then I can really be a little bit more organized and focused in these areas. So I think that'll work really good. I need to do, this bed actually has a ton of perennials I started from seed last fall. It has a ton of that in there. And then that bed has a lot of stuff that overwintered. We got, we got, this is great. And then we have three more beds on the other side, which are all doing really good. So I'm excited. I hope I have time to cut some flowers before the rain gets here. I'm definitely going to try to cut some of my um, roses, my Don Juan roses, which are doing absolutely beautiful. If you didn't catch my um, garden tour that I posted a couple of days ago, go ahead and check that out. But I'm really excited. This is a lot of cut flowers, and this is a lot of cut flowers that are going to um, bloom during early summer to midsummer, which I'm psyched about because that's typically the time of year comes the um, sanitation company. Um, typically during that time of year in the summer is when I have the least amount of flowers. So I'm really excited that I am working ahead to make sure that I do have flowers for that time of year. I think that'll be really, really great. All right, you all, I hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Every time you like and comment, it helps grow my channel. Talk to me about if you have grown any of these varieties that I planted today, or if any of them interest you for your own garden. And be sure to check me out my social media outlets, including Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. As always, she's a mad gardener, or decorator, or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.